Hey, welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Hello there and welcome to episode 20 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. I hope you're doing really well this week and achieving some of those goals that you've set yourself. Today I'm actually going to touch on a subject that I haven't spoken about on this podcast before and it's actually something that I find myself using every day and using it quite successfully too if I might add that and that is of course the social media platform of LinkedIn. So are you on it? Do you even know what LinkedIn is or how to use it to drive leads and connections in your business? Well, today I'm actually going to cover that and more with 16 of my top tips for using and getting the most out of your LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an obvious choice for professional service businesses and it's a really great way for businesses to produce some content to establish themselves as an authority and the leader in their field. It's also really great for building a database of contacts. The network is massive. I think there is 575 million users worldwide and 9 million Australians are actually on the platform of LinkedIn. So there's some really great opportunities in there for networking. But of course, before we go down that LinkedIn rabbit hole, let's do our discovery of the week. This week's discovery is something I've known about for a little while but haven't used it to its full potential in my business until now and now I'm totally hooked. Have you ever heard of Creative Market? Creative Market is actually an online marketplace where people can put up design elements and design assets for us to buy. So what do I mean by design assets? I guess I mean things like Instagram templates and ebook templates and PDF downloadable guide templates and fonts and oh my gosh, there is just so, so much on Creative Market. Now, as a huge, big, massive fan of Canva, which I've talked a lot about on this podcast, I failed to see to my own detriment for years the advantages of Creative Market. But it's amazing and it sits somewhere between Canva, which is a do-it-yourself platform, and hiring a designer. So to help you better understand what I mean, let me give you an example. So recently I purchased a template for doing my latest ebook, Seven Surefire Ways to Grow Your Instagram. All the design work was actually done for me. I purchased it, I think it was about $35 and um, it would have taken me hours to do this and I work for a lot more than $35 an hour. I uploaded it to Canva, which some of you can do. Some of them go into Photoshop, some of them go into Canva and I don't know some of them probably go other places that I haven't discovered yet and I basically uploaded my photos and my copy into it and it was done it was all formatted it was all styled and it was all branded simple yay make my life simpler that's what I'm all about so I guess for an even better understanding head to www.creativemarket.com And remember, things do cost money to purchase. They're not free. But let me ask you again what your hourly rate is and whether or not you can come up with these creative designs within your hourly rate. And just before I finish up on Creative Market, just another tip. If you sign up for their newsletter, you get loads of freebies as well. So little sidebar on that one. Maybe go and sign up on their list. As always, just a little disclaimer. My discoveries are just that and I'm in no way affiliated with them. But I promise to tell you if I ever am. I just love them. I love the response you guys give me out there. Shout out to my listeners who report back on how much they love my discoveries. And 
Of course, I love them too and hopefully they're making all of our lives just a little bit simpler. Oh, and also if you'd like my um, seven surefire ways to grow your Instagram ebook, either to have a look at the template or because you're interested in putting a rocket up your Instagram, then head over to socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash Instagram and download it there. All right, so on to my 16 tips for using LinkedIn in your marketing mix. The best way to describe LinkedIn is professional Facebook. And I can't tell you just how true this is. And I'm going to give you a live example. Last year, one of my LinkedIn connections and acquaintances posted a blog post on both Facebook and LinkedIn. The picture that went with the blog, so like the header picture, was of women in bathing suits. And I have to admit, I thought it was a bit odd considering this person was actually a LinkedIn expert and not really talking about bathing suits in this blog post. But put the photo there, I can only assume to do that, you know, stop the scroll, eye-catching sort of purposes rather than actually related to the blog post and the content of the blog post. To see the different reactions on the different platforms blew my mind. Seriously, the people on Facebook were like a hungry pack of dogs ripping into this person's with statements about women's rights and sexism and using sex to sell. It was an absolute shamble and so detrimental to a brand as well. However, on professional Facebook, on LinkedIn, same picture, It was dealt with by a single person just basically requesting that the picture be changed because it wasn't really appropriate for the article written to which the author or the person, you know, my my acquaintance, my friend, simply wrote back, sure, deepest apologies and that was it. He changed the picture, all was done. The professionalism of LinkedIn was evident. We're all professionals and the article wasn't so professional, but like professionals and rational people, we just simply said, hey, I think you should take it down. On Facebook, it was like someone declared war on a small country. It was actually quite disgraceful. So that's why I call LinkedIn the professional Facebook. So I guess is LinkedIn for you? You might be thinking, hmm. I'm not on LinkedIn. I don't know if it's for me or I am on it. I don't use it. I'm not sure if it's for me. So if you want to grow your network or do online networking or set yourself up as in your industry as the expert and that go-to person, maybe you want to create opportunities including employment or different business ventures, then I think LinkedIn's for you. Or maybe you're just sick of the trolls of Facebook and then maybe it's for you too. Oh, and I can't forget to mention Google, the Google rankings of LinkedIn. Google anyone's name and if they have a LinkedIn profile, chances are it'll come up in the first couple of search results. We can spend thousands on keywords to get a ranking like that, but you can have a LinkedIn profile. It's like money for jam, I'd say, as far as SEO rankings go. Despite the social nature of LinkedIn, it really is different to the other social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, like I was saying just a little bit before with my example. So I thought I'd go through and give you some tips for using it or maybe using it better. Okay, my first tip, keep your profile updated. Many people forget to keep their LinkedIn profiles up to date. So whether you're a total newbie or just starting a new job or starting to explore new opportunities, there's really no excuse for having outdated information on LinkedIn and it will reflect on you badly. So here's two really quick and easy areas that you can check to see if you're up to date. Professional headline. The job of any headline is to entice people to click. At minimum, you should use your headline to highlight your current position or company. For example, maybe director of... Social Media and Marketing Australia. But of course you can and you should go further. You highlight your expertise. So maybe you're a content marketing strategist and copywriter or maybe showcase some awards or skills that you want to turn up in searches like speaker, trainer, author, consultant, whatever that might look like. Tell everyone on LinkedIn who you are, what you do, and why you're someone that they should connect with. And also have a look at your location and your industry. Are your location and industry still accurate? If not, 
fix them now. Doing these two simple little things can help people find you and help you find more relevant potential contacts. My second tip is only use professional photos. LinkedIn profiles that have a picture are 11 times more likely to be viewed. So if you're still showing a silhouette, then maybe it's time to change and reveal yourself. However, here's some friendly advice. Your LinkedIn photo shouldn't be from 20 years ago. You should actually look like the person in your LinkedIn profile. It shouldn't look like it belongs on a dating site or a stock photo site or some other sort of social network such as Facebook and Instagram. And please, please, please don't feature your pet or or your significant other, just no. No, unless you are a pet groomer or something like that. It's just a photo of you. LinkedIn is for professionals, so be one on the platform. My third tip is brand your profile with a background photo. If your LinkedIn profile still has that blue LinkedIn background, then it's time to change that. Give your profile page a little bit of personality or branding with something that's really quite visually appealing in the background. If you can get your image to let people know what you do, then that's even better. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you're a speaker, then maybe your background photo is of you speaking on stage. So straight away, someone who looks at your profile knows that you're a speaker because they can see that image. Canva.com, who I love, has some templates already set up so you can get your LinkedIn banner there. It's super easy and I highly recommend that you do it. My fourth tip is to write a ridiculously good summary. This is where you can really sell yourself to potential connections. Your summary should expand on what appears on your headline, um, highlighting your specialties, your career experience, any noteworthy accolades, and perhaps your thought leadership. There's always lots of discussion on whether your summary should be written in the first person or the third person. To be totally honest, ultimately, I don't think it matters either way, but you need to stay consistent. So be consistent. If you're If you're writing in first person, stay in first person. If you're writing in third person, stay in third person. Don't chop and change. It looks unprofessional and it's really quite confusing for the person who's reading it as well. Avoid jargon that no one else is going to understand and acronyms and really make it easy and engaging to read and watch the typos as well. So maybe get two or three people to read over it for you. My fifth tip is all about keywords. Make sure that you're using keywords with purpose. You know, LinkedIn is keyword driven and keywords can exist in your um, headline, in your summary, in your profile and the right keywords can actually you know help you come up in searches which then can help you with connections and perhaps opportunities. My sixth tip is a bit of a neat trick actually and it's all about your website options. So under your contact information LinkedIn gives you the option to link to a website or a blog but by default the text shows in your profile blog or website and anyone visiting your profile has really no clue where they'll end up if they click on it. So maybe if you want to use your actual brand or your business name you can and here's a little simple trick. So when editing the website area of your profile select the other option and then you can just add your own website title or your URL. Neat little trick that and of course it helps with branding and maybe some keyword searching as well. My seventh tip is personalizing your LinkedIn profile URL. So your URL that sits across the top of anyone's search bar, you can make that personalized. So for instance, you know, mine is linkedin.com slash IN slash Jen Donovan. So have a look at yours. Is your name in your URL or is that is it actually made up of numbers and letters and things like that? So if you haven't gone to the trouble of personalizing your URL, maybe that's something that you can put on the list to do. So my eighth tip is about adding shiny new sections to your profile. LinkedIn actually lets you add several sections to your profile. You can add sections for posts, volunteering, languages, honours, awards, patents, causes and charities that you might care about. And 
and many more. And all these sections open you up to more opportunities to make more connections, which, little reminder, is why we're on the platform to start with. My ninth tip is to tidy up your endorsements. Guys, just because someone endorses you for something doesn't mean it has to stay there. LinkedIn does let you remove any irrelevant skills and endorsements. For instance, you can be endorsed for fire eating, chewing gum or showers. They are real areas of expertise as far as LinkedIn goes. So have a look at your endorsements. If there's anything on there that isn't you or someone's endorsed you for a skill you don't have, then maybe think about removing it. Number 10 is connect with people you don't know. This is probably one of the biggest mistakes that people make on LinkedIn, and that's failing to reach out to people that you you don't actually know yet. It's the whole point of networking, to get to know new people um, and make new connections. One of the things I love most about LinkedIn is the fact that I can connect with people I don't actually know. I have got some brilliant guests coming up on this podcast in the very near future from people that I've reached out to on LinkedIn or they've reached out to me on LinkedIn. We've had a bit of a conversation. I've mentioned that I've got a podcast that um, talks to small business owners and I've seen that they can give great value to you. So, you know, it's not always about reaching out to the people that you already know. Sometimes it's about spreading that network and reaching out to people you actually haven't met yet. My 11th tip is all about personalizing invitations to connect. This is probably my biggest bugbear. You know, if you are connecting to someone on LinkedIn and sending a connection invitation, then make it personal. Connect with that person. You know, use their name. Write them a little message like, hi, name. So maybe, hi, Annie. We seem to have fantastic mutual connections and lots of them. So I thought it'd be really great if we could connect on LinkedIn as well. Thanks so much, Jen. And then after my name, I would just sort of set up my expertise. So small business and marketing podcaster or something like that, just so they knew I had a little bit of expertise. And on the flip side of that, of course, is saying thank you for people who have reached out to you. If someone has sent you a connection, then respond back to them with a personal little note that says, many thanks for reaching out to me name as a LinkedIn connection. If I can be of any help as a small business marketing and social media expert, feel free to reach out to me again. Thanks so much, Jen Donovan. Like just little messages like that can make huge differences. And of course, if someone does accept your request to connect, don't start pitching your service or your product straight away. It is a relationship killer. And I think all of us just hit the delete button or of course I unconnect with them. If that's all they want me for, then I'm gone. My 12th tip is to publish amazing posts. LinkedIn posts offer another great way to influence and gain visibility and acquire new people in your world. Your existing connections are notified when you publish something and new people can discover your posts via searching. Always think about the audience you want to reach. Highlight your expertise and your interests by posting awesome content. Tip number 13 is to find groups that you can join you know it's just like on Facebook you can find LinkedIn groups to join whether it's a group run by a major publication or a group of people with certain titles or a group dedicated to a niche topic there are millions of groups out there to choose from so maybe start searching and have a look at them and join some that are right for you you know join in the discussions start the discussions you don't sell your product as service don't promote yourself just sell your expertise by giving great value to everyone in the group it'll really help build your personal brand tip number 14 is remember where and when you met what's his name So once you've grown your network to hundreds or even to thousands, it might be a little bit daunting to remember every single person or to stay in touch with a few really important connections. Luckily, LinkedIn makes this pretty easy. In the relationships section, in addition to telling you the date when you actually connected with a particular person, it also allows you to write some notes down. So you could write down how you met or set reminders to check in 
in at a particular time of the year. And of course, those notes are only visible to you. So don't stress about that. My 15th tip is all about status updates and how often you should post. So you should try and post on LinkedIn at least once a day, um, a maximum of three or four updates per day. As long as you're sharing useful, relevant content, then that's great. That's okay. Every update is another opportunity to strengthen and forge yet another great connection. So just remember though, LinkedIn is a business network and it's best to use it during business hours. So I think you'll find that posting on weekends and outside business hours don't quite get the traction that you can during business hours. Just something to watch in your analytics, of course. My last tip is all about asking for recommendations. So recommendations sit in your profiles. You really do actually just have to ask for them. Of course, another way to increase the likelihood that you'll get a great recommendation is to give a great recommendation to someone you've worked with. This increases the odds that your contact will feel obliged to return the favor. So that was my 16 tips for getting LinkedIn and using it as part of your marketing mix and having your profile and your LinkedIn as something that can drive leads into your business. Of course, a bonus tip as far as LinkedIn connections go is that you can actually download your connections. After you've gone to all all the trouble of building this amazing network, you don't want to risk losing their contact information. You can actually download a file that has all your contact names and email addresses and job titles and companies, etc, etc. And a little bit of a pro tip with that, that maybe then you can upload it into Facebook and serve them an ad for something you think that they would be interested in. But I don't recommend putting them onto your email list and serving them emails. If you would like to connect to, with them or get them into your world off LinkedIn, then maybe serving them a Facebook ad could be the way to go. If you'd like the instructions on how you can actually go about downloading your LinkedIn data, then head to the show notes at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au and you'll see in the show notes a step-by-step guide on how you can actually download that data. So now you know everything you need to do to refresh that LinkedIn profile or to make a LinkedIn profile. Make yourself look amazing, wow future connections and grow your influence. It all starts with a killer profile. So what are you waiting for? You better go get updating now. What do they say? Be a unicorn in a sea of donkeys, people. (laughs) So maybe you'd like to continue this conversation in my Facebook group. I don't actually have a LinkedIn group. I have a Facebook group and it's called Like-Minded Business Owners. I'd love you to head over there, join up and hear your thoughts on whether or not you think LinkedIn works for your business. But of course, that's all for episode 20 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. I'll be back next Thursday with some more marketing know-how and another great discovery. If you're liking this podcast, then head over to wherever you listen and maybe leave a rating and a review. I would be super, super grateful if you did. Those things are like gold for podcasters like me. Feel free to leave me a DM on Instagram with any comments or, or ideas or any fabulous discoveries. DMs seriously make my day. I'll catch you all next week and remember my small business peeps as my opening song says there's no point in dreaming small If you feel lonely say it loud there's no time like the present Tell it like you feel it say it proud be true and let us see you for the star that you are No point in dreaming small